Uh, my name is Sherman Cabestraw. My name is Indigenous Cuz. My name is uh, Clarence Henry Jr. My name is uh, Teresa, original band member from Dolls First Nation. I was born and raised here. In the islands, uh, during the season, it would be rice picking, blueberry picking. Wherever there was rice, that's where we, we went. We portaged to uh, Poplar Portage. My dad was trapping. Setting nets doesn't matter, even in the wintertime, make holes on the, on the ice. That's how we survived. Raspberries, Saskatoons, plums, dried them out, use them for the wintertime. Even the meat, you would dry your fish, dry your deer meat. Fishing was very nice until the paper mill had condemned everything, you know, the dirty water. There was lots of garbage in the river system. It was just dirty, water was foaming, and we drank that water. First question, I guess, is uh, the flooding. Uh, well, from my understanding, the flooding all started when they started with the roller way up in Kenora area, and then they put in the, uh, the dams and they expanded in, uh, the outflow of the Lake of the Woods into the river so there'd be more volume. They, they needed to have a better control of the water levels because what was happening is because of the constriction here, the Norman Dam, uh, they need the drop of the water, the head. And so the constriction here would force the water levels to raise too high and it would reduce the power production. And the mill required that power in order to, to operate from the Norman and Kenora Dams. Uh, they also needed to get the water through so that they could have the White Dog Dam operating at maximum capacity. And so they just basically came in here and uh, blasted the channel so that they would have a better supply of water to manage the White Dog Dam and to maximize the power potential on Kenora and uh, Norman Power Dams. Simple as that. Well, that caused a major problem down here with flooding and our wild rice. There was a good rice back in that, that, that time. Eh? It was, everything was good. Nobody explained to them that the water is going to rise and it's going to be unsafe, when it's going to be shallow. It, it destroyed a lot of things. It's pretty sad. We went around rice, the rice uh, picking areas. It's really, it looked really bad. I don't know if we're ever going to have rice now because all that vasting they did, it's like everything washed away. So this is, this is where it used to connect right here. This is now an island. They made this channel to, so to prevent flooding from here towards Kenora. Used to be able to walk right across here. When the water levels were left to their natural abilities, uh, there was a total of over 500,000 pounds of wild rice harvested here. Uh, with the management of the river system, it uh, basically destroyed that crop. What it took away was uh, the family staying together, the life that uh, they had here. It was very nice. We made our own homemade the log houses. The trapping that they did, the way we lived, we ate healthy. It was a happy days, no sad days. Just everybody lived normal. Good life. There was uh, two dams that they blasted through, and during that time, I don't think they gave uh, first uh, our First Nations heads up. When the dams came and the water wasn't flowing fast enough, so they blew that that one area up. So that's how that area became an island. But the flooding was really bad when they blasted that channel. You know, it's, uh, sometimes they often wonder where did they put the fish? They was floating all over. They were all dead. Well, they flood the uh, muskrats out. The muskrat was a cash crop. In fact, uh, the portage to the Winnipeg River from the Lake of the Woods was Wujishkanigam, roughly translate the place to where the rats live, which was on the Winnipeg River, it is where uh, there was an abundant supply of muskrats actually drove our economy to a large point uh, because of the fur industry. 
turtles, seals, water gets too high, the young ones pass away. Ducks, same thing. Yeah, it must have killed a lot of animals, you know. Yeah, we, we used to have thousands of ducks here at the dolls here. And we used to, the skies would be full of mallards, but you hardly see any anymore. So how, why do you think that is? Why do you think the ducks are gone? Because the wild race is not here anymore. And that's what they would eat? That's what they eat, yeah. And where they would they live? And they'd survive on it, yeah. yeah. And, so no. then your wild rice duck soup is, is hard, no, to, come hard to come by? Yeah, and I say, you know, I mean, there's still ducks around, of course, but not, not as much as there used to be. Yeah. So do you feel like your diet has changed a lot? Well, of course, you know, McDonald's has taken over kind yeah. of thing. So more processed food, more not pro as natural? Yeah, and you know, that's where a lot of our native people have, are eating a lot of uh, processed food and getting a lot of diabetes, you know, and then that's one of the problems that the native Anishinaabe people have, eh, is yeah. the diabetes. Uh, I, don't, I didn't understand the significance of it, the damage of, from that flooding, how they blast, how they started blasting here without even warning the people. They just started blasting. Some people were hurt in their own homes because of uh, debris, rocks flying. Our people went, you know, elsewhere, Winnipeg, out west, down in Toronto, our families fell apart. They're, they became homeless. They were unable to get housing in the other First, uh, First Nations that they thought we would benefit our people for, from leaving here, but it didn't happen that way. I'm still alive, you know, it's a graceful day by day, you know, just uh, trying to do the same way like I used to live sometimes. What would have happened if the, if the passing didn't occur? It could have been more controllable or uh, to be vice speaking there, so. This is uh, why our people aren't home yet. You know, uh, probably only 20% uh, of our original band membership is home now and the rest are scattered out throughout the country. We want to bring our people home. I hope we can come together as a people in this community and start being healthy together and work together to protect what is left of dolls and to rebuild it in a healthy way. And it's important to have the culture, traditions, our ceremonies, our medicines, that relationship recognized, lived, breathed, and includes making those decisions in our territory for ourselves along with everybody else. Respecting that diversity. It's not somebody dictating who, what, where, when, and why, but it's us being part of that, that solution and having it respected and built right into the foundation of, of that system.